2015 nonprofit marketing and fundraising trends. Now, it's really interesting. Every time the beginning of the year happens, you're going to read a whole bunch of blog posts. This is what you need to look out for. These are the goals for 2015. And this is all really helpful information. But it's not like something has dramatically changed at the beginning of the year. Okay, these are trends that have existed for a while. Um, so a lot of this will probably be a reminder, but what I did is I did some research for the past couple of days focusing on reports published by different organizations like BlackBot and MNR Research and pulled together trends that they're all reporting and I'm kind of condensing it all in one little presentation here. Okay, so this is actually going to be a few different trends plus specific things that you can do. Now the first one is that mobile will continue to dominate your life. Okay. Uh, and what I mean by that is that more supporters will be visiting your website through their smartphone and through their Android or whatever smartphone device they're using. They're going to be visiting your website. You can use Google analytics to track how many people are coming from mobile. You can even drill down into the specific devices that people are using. But if you look at the past three years of data and Google analytics, you'll definitely see a massive increase in the number of visitors to your website who are arriving from a smartphone, all right? Also, potential donors will want to give on their smartphones. So if you're doing a fundraising campaign in 2015 and you have a fundraising page, lots of people are going to be looking at that on a mobile device. So you really have to think about your fundraising platform, how that's looking on a mobile device, okay? People will also delete emails. So email also has to be mobile. People will basically delete an email on their mobile device if they can't view the email, right? So in terms of next steps, measure mobile traffic, at least be aware of it, how prevalent it is on your website, what percent of your visitors are coming from mobile. Make your website responsive. This is something hopefully that most of you have already been working on, you know, making your website look beautiful on a mobile device and be easy to see and people don't have to pinch the screen in order to zoom in on the text or images or anything like that. And then finally make uh, email messages responsive. There's some research by Litmus and they found that basically if people can't read an email, 80% of them will just delete it. If they can't read the email on their smartphone, they're just going to delete it. Okay. So you do not want that to be an obstacle, right? It's hard enough to write really good fundraising emails and create drip campaigns and be strategic about all this stuff. You do not need a problem on someone's mobile device, right? So mobile is going to continue to dominate. Content marketing is going to be key as well. Nonprofits more and more are getting the hang of what content marketing is. It really comes down to storytelling and, um, you know, sharing content from other sources, but having a much more strategic focus. So most nonprofits have embraced content marketing for social media and email. And when I say content marketing, I just mean that people are creating or curating images and blog posts and other information that they're sharing on social media. Content marketing is kind of this broad term. And 65% uh, of nonprofits plan on creating more content in 2015. That was from the MNR study. And measurement is going to be really key because I think nonprofits are going to go away from the days when you could just basically, oh, well, what do we post today? Well, let's just post that funny picture we saw. Or let's take a picture of our staff drinking coffee or people at our event. This random uh, approach to it that has to hopefully stop at some point and things have to be more strategic. So in other words, like, you know, publishing content in response to how your community is reacting. What do they prefer? What do they like? What do they comment on? What do they share? What gets pinned the most on Pinterest? What are your most retweets? And taking all that information as a cue to help inform the content marketing on your site, or at least what you're talking about, right? So focus on measuring to determine success. Um, give the community great content. So this, the second point here is getting your people to create great content, right? So there have been, in 2014, lots of successful campaigns on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook where really the focus is having the community create content and share their own stories. If you do some research on the hashtag FTK for the kids, there are a few different campaigns that use that hashtag to bring awareness to kid-related causes. And also creating content 
we now have a lot of tools that are making this a lot easier. One of my favorites is Canva. So Canva is a great tool where you don't have to worry about what dimensions, you don't have to worry about finding a good attractive template, you don't have to worry about getting someone who knows how to use Photoshop. You go to a single place, a website, they're going to have uh, royalty-free images that you can use, graphic elements. You can really look like a total Photoshop rock star simply by using Canva. Uh, so definitely check that out. But content marketing is going to be key, but it, it should be a little bit more strategic in 2015. Okay? Uh, organizations will also embrace giving days. So I'm not talking about giving Tuesday necessarily, but this idea of giving days where there might be, say, Give MN or Give Austin. There are these giving days cropping up all over the United States. And organizations are going, more and more organizations are going to embrace these. And this is just a trend that's been happening for the past three years. So uh, in 2012, Giving Tuesday had 2,500 participating organizations. In 2014, last month, there were 15,000, 15,000 organizations participated in Giving Tuesday. That's huge. That's a six-fold increase over only two years. And the reason, the benefit that organizations get from participating in something like Giving Tuesday is that they're essentially a fire drill for community engagement. And what I mean by a fire drill, it's a very concentrated effort focused on a specific day and time where a specific outcome is is um, is achieved, right? It's very condensed, focused type of strategy that you can develop around a single day that you can use as a, essentially a leverage point to bring all of your channels together, uh, engaging the community in ways that make sense, okay? So it's kind of a practice, almost like a dry run, or a, I sometimes refer to Giving Tuesday as a defibrillator, right? So if you have a community and nobody's liking, commenting, and sharing, you know, having um, a catalyst like Giving Tuesday or Giving Day can be sometimes just what you need to bring the community back to life, you know, because you have to develop a plan, you have to use multiple channels, you have to have goals, obviously, and outcomes. You'll definitely have outcomes. Uh, and Giving Tuesday, it's, you know, the, really the benefit from a, from a financial revenue standpoint is really about retaining and growing uh, new donors, new volunteers, and, and also growing your email list. Um, so for, for Giving Tuesday or a giving day that you might be thinking about, I would definitely start planning now. So start thinking about, you know, what is that going to look like and how do all of your campaigns leading up to that, how can you connect them all together so that it's really about your community? In other words, like you can't just have completely different separate campaigns. They should all link together so that um, – you know, before Giving Tuesday, you might have, say, a mini campaign that might last three or four days where you're focusing on advocacy or having people sign a petition or a pledge. And then that's leading to something greater, leading to something greater or leading to something more. Because donors, volunteers and supporters, they're always going to ask you what's next. OK, uh, organizations also in my my prediction, my hopeful prediction is that organizations will be smarter about using email. So according to MNR, uh, email fundraising response rates have dropped 11% and advocacy of emails have dropped 25%. This just means that people have many more emails in their inbox. There's just so much more garbage in their inbox and you have a lot more competition. Um, now that said, email lists grew by 14%, which is great, but uh, list churn was about 13% in last year. So that means people are just dropping out, dropping off the email list. So email lists are really growing at a net 1%, according to MNR, right? So the next steps, I mean, there's some serious low hanging fruit when it comes to email marketing for organizations. I've worked with so many organizations and the common challenges or constraints are really about not segmenting. Segmenting really allows you to send the right messages to the right people at the right time. And um, also email allows you to uh, personalize the messages a little bit better. So volunteers should be receiving emails that talk to um, their interest in volunteering, right? People that uh, donate once to your organization, they might respond to outcome stories about that donation. You know, what, what did my money do? 
And a follow-up email on that is absolutely critical. So, you know, just creating certain campaigns that are responsive to what your people want, you know, uh, and that starts with segmenting and, uh, you know, creating smarter messages. So now uh, I think this is the last point, or actually second to the last point, Facebook ads will be really important in 2015 as well. And the reason why is because most of your donors and supporters and volunteers are using Facebook. And as we all know, Facebook reach is plummeting still. It's going to be harder and harder and harder to get into the news feed. That's a guarantee. Um, so you will need to buy Facebook ads in 2015 if you haven't. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that the Facebook ads that are really the most effective are not the sidebar ads, but the new the news feed ads, what they call you you sometimes hear the term native ads, native advertising. Native advertising just means when an ad kind of looks exactly like a piece of content that you would normally see on that particular social platform, like a sponsored tweet on Twitter, a sponsored post in Facebook. These are native ads. Uh, and Facebook ads are super, super cheap. So as a next step, I would highly recommend experimenting with targeted boosted posts. This is These are very easy to do. You just basically click a button and you enter a couple of items and then you buy the boosted post. They're super cheap. Uh, you can, depending upon the fan size, you can pay, spend $5. You can spend $300. There's a huge range of choices. But if you haven't done Facebook ads, it might be a good idea to start experimenting. You know, uh, look at it as, a, as an experiment and don't think, oh my God, you know, $500, you know, don't look at the top of the range. If you're just starting out, maybe start spending $10, then look at the result. How many click throughs? What's your goal? Uh, focus on the higher uh, engaging post as well. So if you're going to do newsfeed ads, which I'm saying you probably should do Facebook ads in 2015 um, strategically, right? Uh, but you always you always want to if it's going to be a native ad, you always want to focus on content that's already getting the thumbs up from people and not just some post that you think people need to see. OK, that's going to be a better use of your time and money. The last point here is healthy bodies and minds will be key. And if you you probably are all following Beth Cantor, she is making a huge, um, uh, you know, um, initiative in this area to really educate people about learning and about exercise and how mind and body, they're all really important because in the end, you know, we're basically not robots. We're made of carbon. We're carbon-based life forms that, that are impacted by a lot of things. Okay. Uh, so next step, get more sleep. That's me. I need to get more sleep. Eat healthier. That's also me. Exercise. That's good close the laptop. It's always good to get outside and, you know, take your eyes off Facebook, get off Twitter, get off LinkedIn, get off, you know, wherever, you know, YouTube, the YouTube videos, close the laptop, take a walk every day. I, I, I definitely recommend that. And uh, it helps if you have a dog. I'll tell you that. So with that, I'm going to open it up for questions now. And